They build for the intended market, believing the intended market can handle it. Now, if a product ends up being used by other people for other things beyond the expectations, well, that is not actually the manufacturer's fault. What that actually means is they created a product that was even better than they thought, and it's being used beyond their intended purpose. So if you actually think about it the right way, that's actually a positive. G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so very good to see you. Today, I wanna to talk about the Sony A7C, a brand new release, a brand new line in the Alpha 7 series. Will this be taking over from the A6000 series? And why? Also, I wanna talk about why the release of the A7C is so good for the Z6 and the Z7, they're the Nikons. All right, let's have a cup of tea. Let's have a bit of a chat and go through my theory, shall we? All right. Mm. So everybody, here's the thing. The Sony A7C is out. It looks pretty good, you know. It's got the uh, EVF chopped off the top. It's now got a flippy screen, pro, con. For some reason, it's got the old menu system, not the new menu system found in the A7S III. And it doesn't have the new color science also found in the A7S III. Yet in this country, it is a $3,200 odd camera, which puts it above quite a lot of other cameras in the similar sort of space, like say the Z6, the Z5, the Panasonic, and even some of the latest Canons. And then finally, there's the big elephant in the room that I wanna ask the question about. This is a question, nothing more than that. But why Sony? Why the one card slot? Nikon has suffered oh so very much by the experts, for example, that we've found on YouTube, certain experts letting us know that Nikon has completely failed by creating a camera with one card slot in 2018. As a little sidestep, I'd like to talk about, before we go deeper on this one card slot, I'd like to talk about this little beastie of a camera right here. This is the A7R, which I purchased in 2013. Now, this camera came out with one card slot. There's that one card slot right there. Why did they do that? And it took Sony, if we fast forward from the A7R, which was one of the first two cameras to come out, there was the A7R and the A7. It took going through the A7R2, the A7 II, the A7S and the A7S II. All of those cameras were single card slots. And it took until late 2017 for Sony to give us the A7R3 with two card slots, and it was something like October, November that was announced, and their most popular mid-range camera, which the A7C is so closely related to, the A7 III, didn't come out with two card slots until the April. You could actually buy one in the April of 2018. Strangely enough, the Nikon cameras came out the same year only six months later. So why did all this happen? And why is all of this good for Nikon? Sony's largely had one slot in their cameras. It's actually quite new, 2017, 2018, that they had the two cards. But golly gosh, did those Sony users come out with their baseball bats to slam anything that wasn't two slots. Yet here we are with the A7C. But I see I'm not here with my baseball bat to rain on Sony's parade. What I want to do is discuss why a company as smart as Sony, clearly fantastic at their marketing, clearly fantastic at their technology. Like this is clear. Look at the PS5, for example. Outstanding. Love it. And of course, their cameras are highly competent, beautiful glass, great autofocus. They're doing very well. 
So they know what they're doing. Why does the A7C have one card slot? Well, I want to explore this in this video and the fact that that one card slot is good for Nikon because what it does, it helps us all understand why camera companies make the decisions that they make. So we have the A7C. Now Sony would have been spending the last two or three, perhaps more years thinking and designing this camera. And when they do that, they think very much about who is the camera aimed at. Ultimately, when you're making a product, you've got to work out who it is that you're trying to sell it to. Now it would appear that this camera is aimed at uh, YouTubers, vloggers, content creators. Okay, we can accept that, that's cool. And Sony have made a decision that YouTubers, influencers, content creators, vloggers, they don't need two card slots. They can either accept that, say, one in 1,000 risk of a card failure, and it's simply not going to be something that's going to concern them at all. Otherwise, Sony, who've given us the A7 III, which has basically got so many of exactly the same things as the A7C, yet they remove a card slot. So they've got to be super confident because there's no way that they're not hearing all the noise that's happened to Nikon. There's no way that they're not aware of that. So they are so confident in their products, they are so confident in the target market that they're aiming this at, the majority, because it's never gonna be everybody, but the majority of people that they're aiming it at, that they go backwards, what would appear to be going backwards to some people, and do one slot, create one slot. Absolute madness. I mean, if you were some of those YouTube experts in the camera industry, surely you'd just be going, what's going on? It's one slot, Sony fail. Not sure I've heard or seen that. Don't know why, because it was a Nikon fail. So Sony has made their choice. Now, let's cast our minds back to mid 2018, might I say just two months after Sony went from having one slot to two in the A7 III and the Z cameras are launched. And yes, they have one slot. Now let's just start with that slot. Firstly, it is not comparing apples with apples, comparing SD with XQD slash CF Express. It is simply not. The two systems work differently and the technologies behind them are vastly different. One is modern, one is not modern. When you think computer and technology years, a little bit like dog years, for every one year in technology, it's probably equivalent to seven years in human life. So SD is 20 times seven. It's 140 years old in technology years. Whereas XQD and CF, well XQD is less than half and CF Express has only been around a year. So these are completely different technologies. That's the first thing. So we were talking about the fact that Sony made a decision based upon who they thought their target audience was. And Nikon would have done exactly the same thing with the Z6 and the Z7, who are our target audience. We've, and they would have said, we've just dropped the D850 exactly one year beforehand, actually even shorter than that beforehand. The D850 is considered by most industry people, reviewers, influencers as the best, if not one of the best uh, all rounder DSLRs ever made. So people like me, who's a pro, who needs a camera like that, already had two of them. I know that the upgrade cycles every four years I am not expecting a replacement for my D850 until 2021. I am set, all good. And if you've got a D5, you're not expecting the replacement until 2020. And of course the D6 replacement came, great. So here we are, there is no expectation in either the D5 or the D850 space uh, for a new body to arrive, no expectation whatsoever. But uh, something like nine, 10 months later, they, after the D850 is launched, they drop, they announce the Z series cameras. And it's like, oh, well, geez, this is a bonus. Here they are, these cameras are here. I had heard on the rumor mill these cameras weren't coming out until 2020, and suddenly they arrived a year earlier than I thought. Okay, well, I've actually got my brand new D850. I just got it nine months ago at the end of 2017. And I'm gonna put on the hat of 
everyday photographer. Oh yeah, I've got my D850s, I'm all good. I'm not expecting to upgrade them till 2021. I don't even need to think about these cameras, do I? No, don't have to think about them. That's exciting that the Z series out. This is Gen 1, it'll take a little while to mature. It took the Sonys to get to Gen 3 until they were, you know, dual card slots and everything else. So uh, no worries, I'll worry about it in 2021. So that is a very valid uh, thought process for the Nikon uh, board, the Nikon R&D department, the marketing department. That would be a very valid approach to thinking about when would professionals expect the D850 replacement to come. So why release the Z6 and the Z7? They were not aimed at pros. The pros were totally satiated and they had the best gear and it was there, no expectation of that being upgraded in a while. So here are these cameras. They arrive, they're Gen 1, they're very competent. Straight away, anybody, anybody, anybody from absolute enthusiast, bottom level, all the way up to top level, they could buy one of these things, whack an F to Z adapter on it, and just play, experiment. No one expecting that you're gonna put it through the D850 or the D5 level experience because you don't need to because you already have those cameras. I am the exact example of this type of person that I'm talking about. I've got my two D850s. I am totally covered when it comes to shooting professionally with speed and slots and vertical grips and everything else. Extraordinarily long battery life. Everything you could possibly want under the sun is covered when it comes to shooting stills with a D850. Just phenomenal camera. But I bought into the Z because I was excited about it. Plus I was looking for hybrid and video, but I was excited. Whack on my F to Z, suddenly I've got this whole bunch of lenses working spectacularly. So Nikon, the boardroom, they sat there and went, Gen 1, some people will think it's a good idea, some people won't, some people will wait a while, some people won't. There'll be all early adopters and there won't be early adopters. We're not going to throw everything into it because we know Gen 2 will be out two years later. So, my whole point, the boardroom, the marketing department, the R&D department, department of Sony made a choice around the A7C and one slot they believe the target audience could handle it. And it is exactly the same for Nikon and they made exactly the same choices a few years ago. These cameras were not aimed at pros. Pros were completely satiated with the cameras that they had in the D850, the D5, the D500, the D750. You choose whatever you want. You had, you were totally covered. And these arrived and we could just start playing with them. These cameras ended up being so good, so I just ended up using them. I'm using them 100% of the time for my personal uh, YouTube and street photography, landscape photography, etc. work. So back to the start, back to why this is the A7C is great news for Nikon, is it shows us. It shows us that even the smartest of companies like Sony, and of course Nikon, because they've made the same decision, give or take, can make these decisions for very deliberate reasons that they've thought about. There is absolutely no way you end up with one card slot in the year 2020 without that decision being hard thought about. Absolutely no chance. And it is even more of a crazy idea than it was in 2018 when Nikon did it. So I think we need to pay respect to Sony and to Nikon they know their customers, they knew where these cameras were going to land, and that's how we got the outcomes that we did. And we know that in the Nikon space, as they give us the next iteration, which is going to have improvements in all sorts of areas, it includes two cards. And that's because one, consumers think they need it, and some do, and consumers also believe that they cannot rely, in the case of Nikon, on one XQD or CF Express card slot. Now, interestingly, Sony have said that their consumers in the case of this camera, which is aimed at content creators and vloggers and so on, who churn out a lot of material, I can tell you, I am pulling cards in and out and using my Z6 every single day to record and to do things with. So, Clearly, Sony have made the decision that one SD is fine. So please, with all due respect, everybody out there, if Sony can do it in 2020, then it's more than cool for Nikon to have done it in 2018. So let's move on from the slots, shall we? 
Thank you, Sony, for providing us some insight and understanding into designing for markets. All right, everybody. Well, I would love to know your opinion. Do you think it makes sense? Does what I'm talking about hold any water? Obviously, there's lots of other parameters, but the overarching statement is they build for the intended market, believing the intended market can handle it. Now, if a product ends up being used by other people for other things beyond the expectations, well, that is not actually the manufacturer's fault. What that actually means is they created a product that was even better than they thought, and it's being used beyond their intended purpose. So if you actually think about it the right way, that's actually a positive. What do you think? I'd love to hear it. Let's have a positive, uh, mature, adult conversation about it, not spitting of chips and not slamming of fists. It's not very much fun. All right, if you are visiting this channel for the very first time today, golly gosh, it is so good to see you. It's lovely to meet you and I'd love to see you again. So please subscribe, please share this video so other people can ponder this very same question. Please like, because it helps get the word out there and for you to see me again. And if you'd like to see over 200 episodes right now, just look down there. Lots of fun things to look at for sure. You could be here for, oh, I don't know, about a week watching stuff probably. Okay, enough talk from me, au revoir. Of Wieder Zane, Sayonara, Ciao, See ya, and okay, catch you later, dude. Bye.